Alright, so we got another video for y'all boys. Today we're gonna be watching a video going over the storytelling in games. I don't know who this is. I don't know what this video even is about. The thumbnail had Elden Ring and Guy Out of War. And, and y'all know I've been on the God of War lately. Elden Ring, one of my favorite games of all time. And that came out this year. I never played a game like that in my life. I don't even like single player games, bro. But they taking me by storm. So it's only right that we react to this. And we're going to be going over a lot of... Let's see all the stuff that we he going to go over. Teacher was right. I don't know what the hell that means. He's showing Last of Us, Red, Red, Red Dead Redemption 2. Two games I never touched. Fable. Classic. Classic. Okay, let's not let's not ruin the rest. But yeah. Yeah, it's going to be pretty much the video. If you guys want more of these video game videos, I guess you want to say, just like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on post case. Without further ado, let's hop into it. Still got to drop the God of War and the Elden Ring series and stuff like that. Walking Dead and all that. But yeah, let's go ahead. Hello, fellow gamers. Oh yeah, I can tell the editing for the be on one. Your favorite Whoops. internet roommate. And something I remember being particularly angry at in school was getting questions on tests like the author wrote, the blood-stained curtains were a distinct. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What 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 song is that? He just gave me crazy nostalgia. Hold on, rewind that. It's like the author wrote. The bit, 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 bit. Bro, I don't know what song that is, but that just gave what me crazy nostalgia. The author meant by this, and just like you or any other, I'm trying not to do too much pausing, by the way, because it's 30 minutes. Had one response to give. How the fool do I? But then my teacher, after giving a lecture about how much she hates her job, would explain what this meant, and she told us that the author meant that the character was depressed. And if you've seen this meme, then you know. This is pretty much how me and all my peers felt about this explanation. But then fast forward in time, I was playing Eco, and it was while playing this game I realized just how much I've changed. See, in Eco, there's not a lot of dialogue, so I had to latch on to other things, like this whole hand-holding thing. Throughout the game, you're constantly holding Yorda's hand and helping her. But as you keep progressing, you know, there's moments where she jumps to your hand or she helps you solve a puzzle. And I started thinking like, wait, 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 are, are they trying to like tell me something, but like without dialogue, with just like gameplay alone? But no, th that can't be true. For that to be the case, there would have to be a moment where Yorda saves you by holding your hand. Holy shit! I've never in my life felt more like a turbo virgin dork than getting hyped over a video game telling a story through mechanics and not dialogue. And of course, by the end of the game, Yorda, who we were helping and saving throughout the whole game, saves us. And because this was a character arc completely done in gameplay, it made me love the game even more and appreciate the characters even more. And while yes, I understand that to me, uh, gameplay and mechanics being intertwined together to tell a story without actually using any dialogue sounds like the coolest shit ever, to someone else might just sound like I'm on some real good silly goof straight from Erica Badu and they're only listening to me because they're hoping they can get some. Point is, my teacher, your teacher, was kind of right. Much like that book actually saying much more by mentioning those blue curtains, movies are shot in certain ways to convey meanings. Music is composed in certain ways to say something else. This is a J. Cole song. I'm like, what am I? I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm not tripping. Without saying anything at all. I had to, I had to think about that hard. Real head ass. So video games have come a long way in terms of well, everything. It used to be that story in video games would just be a wall of text or some shit in the manual you probably threw away. <laughs> but now video game storytelling can be as masterful, intricate, and cinematic as any movie can. There's even video games that could be considered as interactive movies. Part of the huge hype for God of War Ragnarok is to see how this game's story is going to progress, how its characters are going to evolve. God of War is actually a great example because if you look at the progression of storytelling throughout the games, it is insane. You get this tragic backstory of this badass Greek motherfucker who only knows two things, killing and fucking. A whole, a whole lot, lots of fucking. That was already great, but then you see him amazingly develop into this complex, beautifully voice acted father anti-hero just trying to be the best father figure he can. The dude grew a beard and suddenly he went from uh, sex and kill to post-nut clarity and wisdom. Oh, and he's Norse now, I guess? Character development? 
Storytelling is why games like Last of Us or Red Dead 2 are so loved and revered. It's why games like Witcher 3 can have a just the story mode option or a game journalist mode, if you will, because oh no, oh, oh, oh the, game, the game is too hard, I can't do it. Because now video <laughs> games can tell these masterpieces of stories that can even rival filmmaking. I still cry when we watch that one cutscene with Aunt May and Spider-Man PS4. Ugh, you're a little bitch. Stop. You're a little bitch. You're you little spoiling bitch. like Sorry. crazy, gang. I ain't gonna cap, bro. You spoiling like crazy, crazy, like crazy hard right now, bro. Like, you are spoiling like crazy right now, bro. Like, can you calm down? Can you calm down, bro? Like, what's going on with you, bro? Like, bro, like, can you calm down? The hell, nigga? You just spoiled crazy right there. So unnecessary, gang. Like, you could have kept that inside. Like, what's that about, bro? Like, like you good? Like, I gotta play that, bro. Like, why is you doing that? Like, that's, that was so unnecessary, gang. I can't believe you just did that, bro. I can't believe you just did that. Sorry, I was just at the Onion Festival. They were... They were cutting a lot of onions. And if you're particularly into stories about like grizzled anti-hero dads learning to be better father figures, video games has a lot of those for some reason. <laughs> While storytelling in gaming has extremely progressed, I feel at times uh, critics or fans or game awards, really anybody, give this idea that the best way or sometimes the only way a game can tell a story is in that more traditional sense. You know what kind of storytelling I'm talking about. We've gotten a lot of them recently. It's usually heavily guided. You're following a certain path so that the story can play out how it needs to. Uh, very cutscene heavy, very dialogue heavy, very cinematic, almost feeling like an interactive movie at points. And while yes, this does make very great video game storytelling, it's not the only way a video game can tell a story. In comparison, I feel like there's not a lot of love and respect given to how video games can tell stories in ways that only video games can. Sure, a cutscene, for example, could be great, but there's nothing a cutscene can do that a typical movie scene couldn't do. Which is why in today's That's video, facts. I wanted to draw attention to how video games can tell stories in ways only the medium and art form of video games can. For our first example, one of the easiest things- What? What the fuck did he just say? Rewind that. ...to draw attention to how video games can tell stories in ways only the medium and art form of video games can. Okay, so he wants to talk about how video games can tell a story that only video games can. I thought he said example, something completely different. Glad I rewind it. ...is give a player choice. I first experienced this in SmackDown vs. Raw 2005. Bro, I'm telling y'all, Telltale Games, the Telltale Game style of video games when it comes to actual movies and shows are some of the best stuff. Facts. That little option-based, narrative-based gaming stuff, that's some of the best stuff you can do. I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm going to be honest, bro. Like, a lot, I feel like that's going to be the next wave for real for, like, big movies to start pushing. I feel like they in the still in the early early stages now, but they still making a lot of money. I've had just about enough of you, pal. Next week I'm gonna show you what happens when you mess with me, my woman, or my dog Fifi. And he definitely means business. You can tell by the the blaring background music of the angle by by Core. Have I ever thought of this before? Have I ever? I'll be honest, I don't really remember the circumstances, but basically. If you fight against him, there's two possible outcomes. I, I think if you lose, you get the super virgin cuck, just, just you getting violated outcome. But if you win, you get the steamy hot fun times with Tori. <laughs> she throws her undergarments out the shower. This, this game was ridiculous. But for a 12 year old what boy. What the fuck games was y'all playing growing up? What the? Well, I, I, I'd never heard of this shit in my life. I'd never even seen this shit in my life. Maybe I should have liked wrestling growing up. What the hell? That choice meant everything. It does a lot to change the experience from one player to another. In Fable, which path of very black and white morality did you choose? Did you go down the path of 
being kind to children and people and sparing the lives of foes, giving up ultimate power to save the world? Then your hair, it turns white and you even get this little a literal halo over your head. Ah, but then you, you, you hooligan you, you ate way too many live raw chickens. That was wicked, literally. Well, I guess you're the spawn of Satan now. In Spider-Man Web of Shadows, did wow. you make the good moral choices? Did you give up the MJ looking crazy right there? I can't cap. You swing away with Mary Jane in the beautiful sunset. W Spider-Man, what the hell? Or now take on this. Did you make? the right choice by keeping the symbiote using it to save the better choice of black cat and then with her becoming a power couple who rules over new york with your symbiote army what game is this i don't remember that when the hell could you do that i don't remember that at all i used to mess with the spider-mans growing up this game was crazy. It's something only video games can really do. Could you imagine watching a movie or a TV show and being able to decide what happens next? Say yes, 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 say At this point, the medium has completely fleshed. That's facts. Nah, hey, I, I, I knew I, I knew something was special when I heard that beat at the beginning of the uh, video. I knew something was special. I knew something was special. I knew something was special. I knew it. Ha, I knew it. technique with games like Mass Effect giving you this massive dialogue wheel that completely changes the experience for each player. Or especially the Witcher series, where not only are you getting actually interesting side quests, you know, none of that uh, uh, kill 10 boars and bring me 10 of their hogs, but on top of that, some of those side quests can alter parts of the main story too. Did you throw out your story Ring. spare a lot of monsters? Good. Now these ones won't fight you. I will never forget my first time playing Chrono Trigger. Okay, so there was this, uh, what I thought was very insignificant moment at this fair. I bump into this character. Obviously, this is going to be a character interaction. Oh, but she dropped an item. Let me, let me go pick that up first, and then I'll talk to her. Uh, it turns out she's a princess, so then I get sent to trial because they thought Should've I should have played more single-player games coming but up, I, I guess. I shit myself because that insignificant moment was used against me in court. Like, legit. They were like, ah, but you see, our witnesses say this, this is hooligan. He's this scoundrel. After bumping into the princess, didn't help her up. First thing he did was grab the thing that fell out of her pocket. A, a thief! I had no fucking clue that the order of events that I either talk to a character or pick up an item would completely change the outcome of the story. Using this technique not only creates unique experiences from player to player, but also allows games to have multiple endings. You can have a beautifully heartwarming snowball fight with your pseudo daughter and choose the love interest that uh, makes love to you on a stuffed horse, play Witcher 3, and generally be a great person. Or you can be on your Sigma male grind set. Might need to be Reject a Witcher 3 guy, but I gotta play it. Only look out for yourself. Sell your pseudo daughter off for some shekels. Oh, that's, that's a little too crazy, though. I don't know about that one, gang. I don't know about that one, gang. I ain't gonna okay. cat. That's a little too crazy. Another way video games can tell <laughs> stories is through the overly long video essay analysis head out. 90 minute movie, three and a half hour video essay about a video game I've never heard of. As pretentious technique of environmental storytelling, which is in its most basic form, silent storytelling through props or people in environments or honestly just environmental design in general and while yes this can be done in movies with set dressing or books with fucking blue curtains i feel like games can capitalize on it the best because you can actually explore every nook and cranny of these environments in games you can not only feel the history of these locations but you can get up close to them you can read about it you can interact with it this can be seen in its most obvious form almost to a meme level with the skeletons in fallout the devs laid these skelly boys all over their worlds in various situations and poses to give you an idea of what these people were going through right before death and they can range from uh humorous to uh melancholic bro he is putting that now, green screen to use that deep, that's why it's kind of a meme like Oh, uh, environmental storytelling is when skeleton on toilet. You know, it's not doing too much outside of, hmm, 
This skeleton had a beer in his hand before death. Well, by using my British accent and my five head giga brain cells and my many hours of watching analysis videos on YouTube, I can deduce with about 98% probability that because the skeleton had an empty beer bottle in his hand at death, that he must have been drinking beer. Deep as fuck. Whoa! Death Note music hit fits out? for nah, all these type of situations. I ain't gonna lie. Can we talk about like the political and economic state of the world right now? But regardless, it still provides <laughs> emotion and narrative to gaming without actually using any words. It's silent storytelling. Last of Us is one of the best stories in gaming. Yes, of course, because of the narrative, the characters, the, and the many amazing moments. But I don't hear enough talk about the tiny details of the storytelling like how we feel connected to these characters and their world through its environmental storytelling. When you go into an abandoned house and you find luggage, uh, portraits, uh, a, a newborn child's room, or memorials, these are all narrative brushstrokes on the canvas that is Last of Us storytelling. Even something like level design can be environmental storytelling. In Uncharted, the devs will design these caves to feel claustrophobic and cramped and have these very low ceilings. So we can have a semblance of understanding what our player character Nathan Drake feels when he's exploring these caves. But the devs also made it so when you finally get out of that cave, you get this beautiful, free, Vista. So we theoretically can feel that sense of relief and just <sighs> that Drake feels escaping that cave. That's using level design as environmental storytelling all just through emotions. Think of that iconic dead space blood writing of cut off their limbs. This is great because not only does it work for environmental storytelling, giving us this idea of someone right before they died, realizing something about the enemies and deciding to write it on a wall to help the next person, but it also simultaneously gives us a hint mechanically how to approach the coming enemies. In Silent Hill 2, that fog was probably there in reality to help with hardware limitations. The game probably had trouble loading in all the stuff that had to come into view as you would run through the area. So you put a fog there to cover all that processing. But the devs went out of their way to make that fog part of the narrative and setting. Now that fog is a psychological representation of our character. It gives the- Damn nigga, you just flashbanged the shit out of me. Atmosphere, all because of environmental storytelling. One of my favorite examples of this- Bro flashbanged the Souls hell out of me. Two. So as you play Dark Souls 2, you learn a little bit about the history of the world and its lore. You come to find out that there was this huge war between the humans and the giants. So now in the present, there is an area called the Forest of Fallen Giants. Explore it, you find souls. It's gotta be like Dark Souls or something. Giants that are intertwined with the trees after all these years have passed. Which alone is enough, but then this brilliant moment happens. You notice these two enemies that aren't going for you. They're going out of their way to attack a tree. But before you start thinking that it's bad AI, you notice that that tree is one of the giant trees. It's a beautiful way of hinting to that war. And giving beautiful pathos to these enemies because they've lost their minds so far that all they remember is fighting that war with the giants. That's why they're attacking the giant tree. Environmental storytelling is such an important technique because it's a big factor as to why we gamers can connect and feel like we've actually lived in these worlds. And finally, my favorite way of storytelling through mechanics. This could either be literal mechanics and buttons telling a story or the merging of gameplay and story. Mid bump? We'll be back. What the fuck, boy? If you don't resume the video? One of the oldest examples of this. What you think this shit is a damn anime, nigga? The fuck, boy? You don't. The hell? That I've never played, but I read about it, and I, I think it's fucking cool, so I'm gonna tell you about it. So there's this game called Missile <laughs> Command. It came out for the Atari 
in 1980. And just by looking at it, he dropped that gem that and he ain't gonna just leave it there. Nah, bro. Here. I want you to explain that, game. Protecting these cities and these supplies using missiles against these nukes coming down. But all of this. Wait, that's what this was? Those are nukes coming down? I was a dumbass little kid America. then, bro. The creator himself, David Thurier, said he made this to show his experience of what living around the time of the Cold War was like. When the cities around where he lived were getting attacked. That's why in the game, you're only getting attacked. You're not playing offense. You're constantly playing defense. You are simply just trying to survive. At the beginning of development, all these cities had names, but then he wiped that and made them have no names so that any player can project their cities onto the game. He wanted you to feel the Damn. quick and hard decisions you had that's to make. That's hard right there. I ain't gonna lie. Missile commander. That's deep. Like I ain't gonna catch. That's deep. I ain't gonna lie. That's kind of deep. So you can protect the other half easier. Literally using half of human civilization at the cost. Now that's pretty deep. The other. But the most Dang, you let him get bombed, bro. The decision these devs made was to make it so you cannot win Missile Command. And it was programmed this way to give the narrative of you can't really win a nuclear war. You can only defend. You can only survive and delay the inevitable until... And unlike other games, it doesn't end with a game over, it ends with a the end. This was also put in to give you the narrative idea of no one really wins a nuclear war. There's nothing left. I love this because even though this game is so old and it kind of just looks like lines and circles, this technique allows it to still tell a narrative, a story, without a single line of dialogue. You know, the more I do these videos, I really come to realize just what type of nerd I am. I seem to just be really obsessed with like insignificant details that to me add so much to something. <laughs> like I remember seeing this tweet, hopefully I can find it. That was basically like video game. It changes the sounds of the pitter patters of uh, feet when the character walks on either wood compared to sand or, or, or tile. And then it says, gamer. Wow. Inspirational. Motivational. Emotional. This game changed my life. And I was like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I, I, I should be spit on. Another game that does this What the is fuck? Bioshock. So a lot of games, especially in this time, were very linear. And usually there was no reason behind that. It was just That was crazy. Well, it's a video game. They're they're linear. But something Bioshock did was make the game being linear make sense within the narrative big spoiler for the first bioshock game if you haven't played it just kind of hover over the thing until you see a little image of me actually squatting that's when i'll be done talking about bioshock so as you're going through the game you're in constant contact with this fella and he's always asking you you know like would you kindly do this he's talking about bioshock for a long time he would does you kindly do that and you know you're not thinking much about it you just kind of do it he seems like a swell fella and the game is programmed to be linear so you literally can't do anything else you have to do this but then before you know it m night shamalama ding dong comes grabs your dick and surprises you with a twist your character finds out he's been brainwashed his whole life, family, and past weren't real. They were completely fabricated. And he's kind of under a hypnosis mind trick, so whenever this guy says, would you kindly... Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly get this? He has to do it. And that's what you've been hearing all throughout the game. And, and oh my god, when I found that very first audio log of hearing our character as a child having to... The, the little puppy... I don't, I don't want to talk about it. And because of this, now you have a merging of gameplay and story. As a linear game, you have no other choice but to do what the game devs intended. But because in the story, you are brainwashed to do whatever you're told based off the phrase, would you kindly, now there is a narrative and story reason as to why the game is linear, as to why you're doing everything in a certain or so now you're not just doing everything this guy tells you to do because oh it's a game i have to do this no there's a story reason you're literally brainwashed to do that it adds so much this already amazing story that this game has to angle this one ain't hitting the same like the other ones in my opinion best stories in all of gaming 
Another great but different example is from Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. Spoilers for A Brother A Tale of Two Sons, if you don't want that, skip until I'm standing again. <laughs> so in this game you play as two brothers and you have to move each of them with a different analog stick. Little brother moves with one analog, big brother moves with the other. And the little brother is scared to swim, so whenever you get near water, you have to have the little brother run up on the big brother's back, and then he will carry him for the rest of the way. Eventually, the big brother dies, and after his death, Boy. you can only play as the little brother. But this also means, gameplay-wise, you're only playing with one of the analog sticks. But then there comes a moment where, once again, there's water. And once again, little brother's scared. If you try to go into the water, it won't work. Unless you use the other analog stick that was the older brother's analog stick. That is the only way you can actually swim. Them making it so you have to use the analog stick that belonged to the older brother to swim, it's storytelling through a fucking game control. All right, that one hit. That, is, that one hit. Uh, hey, I, that I one hit. Okay. Them, man, I do. I like Everybody that one. Asking, brother, get on the phone, call him, and tell him you love him. What's up? Hey, uh, I love you. What's wrong with you, dude? And it would not be an internet pit stop video if we did not end without talking about Dark Souls. You've heard the story. Bubba told me to watch lore videos after beating Dark Souls. I said, ha, I'm not a virgin. But then after beating the game, I accepted the return of my virginity, and I became a Souls lore historian. So much of the Souls series has lore and story connected to it. And to me, the most impactful way that Dark Souls did this was in Dark Souls 3, where by using music, a boss fight, and knowledge of prior games, it tells a story. You fight this boss and he keeps switching movesets. He's a sword boy, he's a long stick boy, he's a little bitch wizard boy, he's a, he's a ninja flip boy. And when you beat him and you read his lore, you find out he is the manifestation of everyone that has linked the fight. So all those players, you, your friend, those wandering ghosts you saw, those funny bloodstains you saw die, those, those random ghosts that either came to fuck with you or help you. He is all of them. And because that's the narrative, gameplay-wise, he has all these different movesets because narratively, he's, you, you, you get what I mean, you get. But of course, beyond even that, he has a legendary second phase. And the second phase is just masterful storytelling without using a single line of dialogue. Anybody who played these games can understand the story of what's happening in this boss's second phase Never touched it. simply by hearing this. Wait, what, what the fuck is this? He becomes the first person ever to link the bonfire. He becomes the man who basically created these worlds, who committed the first sin. He becomes Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. And because he's at his peak of his power, this time you can't parry him like you could in the first game. And again, nobody outright tells you that. But if you play Dark Souls 1 and now you're playing Dark Souls 3, you understand it. Not only because of the soundtrack, but because even if you look at his moveset, it's the exact same. It's a beautiful swan song to a three-part series, and all of that. All of the lore, all of the storytelling, all that narrative was said without a single line of dialogue. A single cutscene. That's the real beauty of video game storytelling. It can say just as much as any hundred thousand word long movie script, as any gameplay interrupting ass cutscene, as any blue curtain ass book with just three notes. <laughs> Oh, that was the that was on his. That was his beat when you or instrumental or sound, whatever you want to call it. Times. The more you get rid of that line between gameplay and story, the closer you get to creating a separate universe. The more the characters in the world will feel real. And to some that might sound stupid and lame, but hey, I'm just a nerd with an opinion. It's funny, I wrote this script like a couple years ago, but I decided to, you know, fully flesh it out and actually do it because I kept seeing criticism for Elden Ring getting... Elden Ring for best narrative is truly a farce. 
best narrative in uh, the game awards. And people didn't play the game, bro. Criticizing it. They didn't finish the game. There's no way they did. more traditional and what people see as typical video game storytelling. Oh, it doesn't have millions of words of dialogue. Oh, it doesn't have cutscenes that interrupt my gameplay. Oh, it doesn't <laughs> basically be a movie. It's not real storytelling. And sure, it is easier to understand that kind of storytelling compared to reading a bunch of lore and then trying to piece puzzles together. And then I ain't really watched no lore and I understood the story pretty decently. I don't understand videos. everything, yeah, obviously. You pay attention more to understand it. At the end of the day, it's still storytelling. And it's a storytelling in a way that only video games can. Which is why we shouldn't criticize it. Both of these storytelling methods are great and can coexist. Dark Souls has a great story. Last of Us has a great story. Elden Ring has a great story. God of War has a great story. They just tell them differently. Differently. You can appreciate both for mm. different reasons. That hit. What I like about the way that one hit, though. I ain't gonna lie. That one definitely hit. All these techniques I talked about today is that they just tell them differently. Tell he brought it back. In completely unique ways. That only nah, this one was, that's this nostalgia right here though. I ain't gonna cap. As a medium. I hope in the future we continue to see more unique ways of video game storytelling because it really does give video games as a medium its own identity. And more importantly, it gives nerds like me big old chubs in our pants. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching my video. Please leave a comment to your favorite video games that tell stories in unique ways. Or a moment in a game that used a unique way of This nigga looked like he in the nineties, I ain't gonna cap. It look like he in a completely like different era than me right now, bro. Leave me a like and a subscribe. But most of all, thank you so much for coming to this little pit stop on the corner of the internet. Peace. That was hard, bro. That was hard. There you go, cat. That was hard. That was hard. That was a hit. Now, I might got to react to more of his videos. That's a hit, gang. I told y'all, I never even heard a dude, never even watched one of them videos. That's a hit, gang. I can't lie. That is a hit. I gotta watch some of his videos off stream, off videos, just to, you know what I'm saying, get a little taste. I want the whole thing. But yeah, that's gonna be the end of this video. If you guys want more, like the video, subscribe, new, turn notifications, all that good stuff. Without further ado, man, pause. <laughs> it's your boy, Fitz, and I'm out to do, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!